Richard and Charlotte Murphy Sowers graduated from Towson State College. Richard graduated in 1963 with a bachelor's degree in mathematics with a minor in secondary education. Charlotte graduated in 1964 with a bachelor's degree in elementary education. Dr. Richard Sowers taught in several higher education institutions, eventually accepting administrative posts, including college president. Charlotte Sowers was an award-winning teacher in Charlottesville, Virginia, as well as in other school systems. She also served as First Lady during Richard's posts as University President. These are their reflections. Dr. and Mrs. Sowers, thank you so much for your willingness to be part of the Towson University Teacher Education Oral History Project. What you share with us this morning will add greatly to our understanding of teacher education across time. And I think the best place to begin is in the beginning. So I would ask you each to tell us about your early social context, where, where you grew up, what you were thinking about in terms of a potential career um, as you went through high school. And um, Rich, why don't we start with you? Okay, I grew up in Halethorpe in southwest Baltimore County. Went to Catonsville High School. Mm -hmm. um, I backed into education. <laughs> Uh, I'm the first in from my family to attend college, mm -hmm. and I didn't have a lot of parental, I didn't have any parental resistance, but I didn't have a lot of parental encouragement because they were completely unfamiliar with college life and so forth and the opportunities. My father was a working man, my mother was a stay-at-home mom, and then she got a job as well. Uh, when I was a senior at, at Catonsville, I applied to University of Maryland School of Pharmacy. Oh. and did not get in mm. because of my high school grades. Mm. And uh, <laughs> instead, they accepted me to College Park. However, that year, pharmacy education went from a four-year curriculum to a five-year curriculum. Oh. So by going to College Park for one year and then transferring, I would have had to go five years. Yes. And I was paying my own education through summer jobs, and I didn't think that was practical. So. Towson was in one way a second choice, but it turned mm -hmm. out to be a very, very good second choice. And Charlotte, how about you? I knew from early on, I guess because of mother and daddy's influence, mm -hmm. that I wanted to be a teacher. Um, daddy had been at Towson, he had been at Western Maryland College, he had been at Columbia University, and he would, he would have liked me to have gone to Western Maryland. But since I knew I wanted to be a teacher, to me, it just made sense to come to Towson. Yes. And so early on, I had decided that I would come to Towson. And I knew I wanted elementary. I knew because of mother and second grade and being exposed to her teaching and her grade level, I knew I wanted upper <laughs> elementary. <laughs> and I had even persuaded um, my education teachers to give me two experiences in the upper grades as opposed to in those days you did one in the lower grades and one in the upper grades. But I knew I didn't want the lower grades and they let me do that. Huh. So um, Rich, you come to campus in 1959. Nine. And <clears throat> Do you remember, what do you, I should ask you, what do you remember about your experience there, first generation college student, and um, more specifically, what do you remember about your education courses? First of all, uh, Towson was not exclusively, but largely a commuter college mm. uh, at the time. The residence population was smaller than the commuting population. Mm -hmm. And it also was uh, not uh, active on weekends. I see. Um, Charlotte and I had dated in high school and I was a year ahead of her. So for my freshman year, I used to take the trolley and the bus home uh -huh. every weekend <laughs> so that she and I could see each other uh, on the weekends. But I lived in uh, the two men's dorms at the time, Ward and West, mm -hmm. um, probably two years in each. Um, Towson was a good 
place for me. I didn't have any experience with um, being, um, no, that's not right. I started to say I didn't have any experience being really academically challenged. That's not true. Uh, I had a good high school preparation, but I wasn't highly motivated mm -hmm. uh, when I was in high school, and it took a while for me to really become uh, more of a scholar. But uh, I had a very good experience at Towson. I don't remember a great deal about the education classes. Mm -hmm. I knew that I wanted to study science. And I ended up probably because of the influence of faculty uh, majoring in mathematics. Mm -hmm. But I took a number of science courses as well. And those faculty, the math science faculty, were among the most influential to me. At that time, even though uh, I was the last class to graduate from Towson State Teachers College, mm -hmm. Uh, if you were interested in secondary education, you majored in an academic discipline and minored in education. Mm -hmm. uh, psychology was part of that minor. Uh, there was an intro to education courses, I remember, and then there was a social foundations or f foundations of education mm -hmm. course. It may have been a four credit course. Um, I remember I had Grayson Burrier uh, for that course. And um, then I student taught in the fall of my senior year. Um, okay. Student taught at Woodlawn High School. I had graduated from Catonsville High School. When I was at Catonsville, Woodlawn was not there. I they see. built a new building and, and opened it up while I was at Towson. And the principal and many of the teachers from Catonsville migrated over. So uh -huh. that when I student taught, I knew a number of people who were there. Ah. Uh, Mr. Schwartz was the principal. And I student taught under uh, Margaret Walters uh, in mathematics. Um, just as a digression. Uh -huh. Student teaching was very influential for me. Really? It convinced me that I did not want to teach at the secondary level. Oh, really? <laughs> and that okay. was part of my motivation for then going on to get a, ma a master's degree and eventually a PhD uh, so that I could teach at the college level. And you knew that experience told you this was not where you wanted to spend your career. Correct. Correct. I enjoyed teaching. I enjoyed, and Miss Walters was very effective. Uh -huh. uh, she she was a very good teacher, uh, a strict disciplinarian, yes. and you know, uh, not a lighthearted uh, class atmosphere. But she was very good and a very good uh, supervising teacher. But just the uh, the level of the maturity of the students and so forth, uh, I decided that I wanted to teach older students. Uh huh. Interesting, but it was a good time to decide that. Correct. Indeed. Correct. So, and Charlotte, you come to Towson a year later. I came a year later, and it was great. I mean, I enjoyed everything. We lived, uh, I was in Richmond Hall in the tower, up on the sixth floor, <laughs> and there were 12 um girls that really got along quite well and we still stay in contact today it's wonderful so um you know a lot of our friends we've lost two that i know of out of the 12. Mm -hmm. um, one or two left before graduation um, but of the seven or eight that are there i'm in contact with four or five of them today so it's it's good it was, it was a good, good experience. That's special. It that was special. Um, I, what, you, were, you were in FAC? Yes. And I was in FAC. And FAC is? Freshman Advisory Council. Uh-huh. Yeah. So uh, did that. The they picked sophomores, <laughs> juniors, and seniors. And we were essentially mentors to freshmen, incoming freshmen. Great. At that time, there was a freshman hazing. There was. Which you have probably heard about before. No, tell us. No. Oh, spook week? No. Oh, about <laughs> middle of October, maybe pushing Thanksgiving or pushing Halloween, uh, was spook week. I see. And the upperclassmen all signed up and were spook masters, was that what they were I called? I don't remember. For <laughs> I was too freshmen. scared. <laughs> and for a whole week, I mean, we had to sing in the dining hall, we had to do all kinds of crazy stuff like that. But then, the weekend was a uh, spook night. I see. First of all, we had to prepare our rooms because 
um, people were going to come in and wreck our rooms. I see. So we ended up packing stuff away, boxing it all up. I took a bunch of stuff home with oh, me, my that heavens. kind of thing. It turns out that we were our own wrecking crew. <laughs> we had to put it all back together. But then there was a spook night experience. And what did that entail? All I remember is that we were we all had to gather in a place and we were told that we were going to be taken down through the tunnels of Stevens Hall. Mm. Well, I think that ended up just being the halls of Stephen Hall. <laughs> but we were we were told we were blindfolded. It was, but oh. we were blindfolded and we all held hands and we'd have to crawl over things and we'd have to crawl under things <laughs> and um, I was kind of fearful, and if I remember correctly, he wasn't very much help in telling me what was really <laughs> going to go on. So I, I went through it too. Wonderful. I don't think we do that anymore. <laughs> no, I... But I don't know for sure, because I haven't resided in a residence hall, right. so who knows? Towson had what I would describe as a nurturing environment at the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember, I've forgotten who it was, I don't think it was uh, Dean Murphy, the Dean of Students, but it, it may have been she, it may have been someone else, um, at a big freshman class meeting, giving a standard speech, look to your left, look to your right, only one of the three of you is going to graduate, you know, and I remember the people who were on either <laughs> side of me, uh, and sure enough, I was the only one who graduated, <laughs> but, um, but in spite of that, and, and I think that uh, there was an adequate, for me, an adequate level of academic rigor. But um, there were aspects about it where, that I would describe as nurturing. Uh -huh. You know, people didn't fall through the cracks, uh -huh. at least among the residence hall population. Yes. Uh, Mary Lee Furlow was the uh, director of residence life. Uh -huh. She was very good. And I was an RA in my senior year and it was on FAC, and so had some contact with her. But there, were, there was a supportive atmosphere, both academically and socially. Uh -huh. And did you feel you got support, Charlotte? I did. I really thought Towson, for me, was a nice halfway house. Uh -huh. My parents had been pretty strict with me. Uh, I was not allowed out a lot on my own, and um, you know, I came there and there were dorm mothers and of course you had to sign in and you had to sign out and you had to be in every night at 7.30 unless you were in the library. <laughs> uh -huh. So we met almost every night in, in the, the library, library and we worked and studied and uh -huh. we did, but we were together, uh -huh. you know, there. Um, and that was great. When I got into Prettyman Hall my junior and senior year, uh, Ma Tillman would have the girls down for coffee uh -huh. on Saturday morning and she'd do tea and coffee and cookies and little uh, pastries and uh, it was just a real good time. It was very nice. Um, what do you recall about your courses at Towson, especially your education courses? I thought my Towson courses were very good. I felt I ended up going to University of Virginia uh -huh. and getting a master's degree, uh -huh. and I felt very well prepared. Uh -huh. um, good. I knew what the teacher expectations were when I got to University of Virginia. In fact, one of my fondest memories was I had a course with um, a teacher there if, with exceptional children, and we had to do a, a critique of a book. And I knew how to write a critique, <laughs> and most of the people in my class did not. There you go. And so we walked into class, and she had my paper and read my paper huh. to the class as an example of how to do a book critique. Huh. So I felt very well prepared at that. I had had an advanced course in reading at Towson. I'm getting stuffed up. And uh, I just felt really good about my class preparation. Now, um, Rich had talked about the sort of the defining nature of his student teaching experience. Uh, would you tell us a little bit about your student teaching experience? Just that I enjoyed it very much. 
Uh, I was at Lutherville Elementary School under, I think, a Frank Tubrick. That doesn't mm -hmm. sound quite right, but it was close. But it was a great experience. Um, I had to teach uh, Treasure Island. <laughs> and then I remember being in Prettyman Hall with brown paper and candles and lighter matches at 10 o'clock at night making a map that was like three feet by four feet against all dormitory rules and regulations. <laughs> but I had friends that were helping me and we were burning edges of the paper oh. and swatting <laughs> it out with, a, with wet towels so that we didn't turn the place uh, on fire. But that, I needed that map to go for <laughs> my teaching. And uh, you know, that's a highlight that, that I remember Absolutely. doing that. Uh, all turned out well. Um, Didn't you also take a class trip down to Williamsburg? That was what? in Charlottesville. That's when I taught at Charlottesville. I thought when your student taught there was also a class trip. Hmm. May I have been. Yeah. Okay. May have been. I may have been be getting the two mixed up, but mm -hmm. I, I don't remember that. But you did, and somehow you must have been very convincing, very persuasive. You talked the powers that be at Towson into letting you to do two upper level. I, I did that. Great. One was in Baltimore City, uh -huh. and I remember taking the trolley or streetcar or bus in there and doing an experience there. But back in those days, we had a lot of experiences with children before we ever did the student teaching. You did. Um, we so would observe at Lida Lee Talk. We, we did, went over there, we would have classes over there, our class would meet over there. We would observe over there. Um, I think in either sophomore year, we had a, it wasn't student teaching, mm -hmm. but it was an experience out into the same classroom for several weeks, three or four or five weeks we would go one day a week uh -huh. and observe and I think we would teach like a spelling lesson or a literature lesson. There were one or two things that we would prepare to get us ready for our big student teaching experience. I think there's a contrast between people in the elementary curriculum and the secondary curriculum. Mm -hmm. The secondary curriculum, I think looking ahead toward uh, the next phase of Towson, which is Towson State College and then Towson State University, uh, was emphasizing the subject matter more. Uh -huh. So my uh, education courses were a minor, yes. uh, probably about 18 hours, mm -hmm. and, uh, and student teaching. And student teaching was certainly, um, and I, I didn't mean to say anything negative about it, it certainly was good preparation because when I did finally get uh, start te my teaching career on the college level, I felt very comfortable in the classroom. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously I latched on to some of the senior faculty as mentors, but yes. uh, I felt like I knew what I was doing in the classroom. And Rich, you didn't have any experience before student teaching in schools? I don't remember. I don't think so. Uh, there may have been um, a, a couple of observations, uh -huh. but I don't, I don't re remember those. I don't think so. It's probably the difference, as you said, in, in sort of the setup of those right. programs. Right. But sort now, of Charlotte's teacher education preparation prepared her very well mm -hmm. for her uh, graduate program at the University of Virginia mm -hmm. in the Curry School of Education. Um, I have to say that I was not well prepared when I went on for a master's degree in mathematics. Mm -hmm. uh, the level of mathematics and the, and the intensity of mathematics at the time, and the faculty were, were pretty good. Uh, Marvin Volpel, for one, was, was an excellent teacher. But the, the, the um, strength of the curriculum mm -hmm. was not there to prepare people for graduate school. It was very good for preparing teacher, teachers for junior high and senior high yes. uh, teaching. Which was essentially what the university exactly. was doing, was doing at exactly. the time. Well, but I had Dr. Cornway, mm -hmm. and he was very good, very practical. Um, I can remember in one of his education classes, he said, all right, I want you all to line up. And so it was like at the end of a class, we all stood up and chit-chatting and da-da-da-da-da, mm -hmm. and moseying over to the door. 
And with that, he turned around, kind of put his hands on his hips. He said, would you all go back and sit down? And the next time when you get up, will you get up and be quiet? And I don't expect any talking. <laughs> Which was, he was actually teaching us how to line up glass uh -huh. when we had our own classroom. Uh -huh. And what expectations as teachers we should have. Um, and so we all went back, <laughs> very chagrin, got up, stood in line, <laughs> behaved ourselves. He marched us down the hall, turned around, we came back. Um, another thing that I remember, and I, I'm not sure it was his class, but one of the classes, we were, there were always to be a reading book on the chalk ledge. Uh -huh. Because if you had two or three minutes, you did not waste time. Uh -huh. If you ended a lesson and there was a few minutes yet to go, you picked up the book and you read a few pages from that book. Mm -hmm. um, with teaching, we had to take uh, classes in manuscript and cursive writing. Uh -huh. And that was not a special course, but it was part of a course that we had to change. I had to change some of my handwriting yes. to meet those expectations if I was going to be in an elementary classroom. Different programs. So, so I really felt that I'd do what I was doing yes. when I went into so when you, teaching. As you were graduating, you were, you were eager? You felt confident? I did. I did. Very much so. And Rich, you had decided that you might want to go on for a master's right. degree. Uh, there was a person in the residence hall staff, I want to say it was Jim Wassenauer, mm -hmm. who had gone to Michigan State and had been part of the residence hall staff at this large university, big residence hall population. And he knew the director of the program, Don Adams, and he was instrumental in getting me uh, an assistantship. Uh, I was a GA, a graduate assistant, mm -hmm. in a large men's dorm mm -hmm. at Michigan State. But I went to Michigan State uh, for actually two years and mm -hmm. earned a master's degree. And Charlotte was one year behind me, so the summer between those two years was when uh, she and I got married. And her first teaching is actually in Lansing, Michigan, public schools. Uh, but I got a master's degree and then I started teaching uh, at the college level, at Wil what was then Wilkes College, now is Wilkes University mm -hmm. in Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. So that was fortunate that you got a job in got Lansing. Got a job, taught in Lansing sixth grade, mm -hmm. and uh, was there taught for them one year in the summer while he finished up. Mm -hmm. And then we moved to Pennsylvania and I taught for Kingston Public Schools as a reading math teacher for just six or eight months. At the time we were living, we were dorm parents oh, really? at uh, a dorm Wyoming seminary which had a preparatory school, it's a private school. We were dorm parents there. <coughs> um, there were no openings there for me, so mm -hmm. that's why I went with Kingston and did some reading and math. But at the end of the year, a position opened up at their lower school, and they really wanted me to take that position. So I gave up the Kingston position, and I went to work for Wyoming Seminary in first grade. <laughs> <laughs> Which, having not wanted to be uh -huh. first grade, um, so I did that for two years. And how was that? Was that manageable? It was okay. Uh -huh. it, it, I, it was manageable. I enjoyed it. Um, it was a relatively good experience. Uh -huh. But as soon as, well, I did that and then I, we started a family and um, I guess we went back to graduate school. Then we left and went back to UVA uh -huh. for graduate work and I got a master's degree and he got his PhD. Uh, your teaching experience there was not a typical public school situation. Their class size was 14 or 15. How old yeah. you And it was a prep school, so mm -hmm. a little bit more selective student mm -hmm. environment. A little bit more pr uh, parental support for the students mm -hmm. than you might expect in a public parental school. Parental support, but also greater expectations. Absolutely. I mean, it, was, hand it was a hand. different ball of wax, so mm -hmm. right. um, But we went away and did that, and then when I came back, I did fourth grade and I did fourth grade for about 12 or 15 years. And then I moved upstairs and did seventh grade social studies. And I really enjoyed the seventh grade social studies experience. So, and I, I also did some adjunct teaching for Marywood College, 
Yes. Um, they wanted teachers to teach other teachers how to put more science in the elementary curriculum. And I had had a course from Susan Kavalik out in California where she had come to the East Coast and did thematic teaching. So I was selected to work with another teacher and we team taught and we did uh, putting science into the elementary curriculum through a thematic teaching approach. And that so. is, is um, once again, a very, very important emphasis in elementary education right. is the whole STEM approach to everything. So you were ahead of your time, so to speak, on that one. Back, back then, that's true. Charlotte, can you tell us what you liked about fourth grade, about those intermediate grade students, as opposed to the younger, the, ones. the younger ones? I think that folks would be interested in why that fits so much better for you. I just like the older student. I like being able to get into a little different level of classroom work uh -huh. and projects. Uh -huh. uh, there could be more collaboration with students. We did, we did things in groups, which again was a little ahead of the time when yes. I was at the, the private school. Um, I just enjoyed that kind of teaching more. Uh -huh. At one point we did some departmentalization and I did math, science, and social studies. And that I really enjoyed. Hmm. Um, and then when, we got up, when I went upstairs and did uh, seventh grade social studies, again we, we worked with the other teachers who taught those grades. And the social studies correlated with what they were doing in English. And we did some work with the math teacher and we did math projects related to what we were doing in science and social studies. Um, everything was kind of connected. If we studied South America, we did artwork of South America, we did music of South America, we did reading about South America, <laughs> we did history and geography of South America, so and culture of South America. So it, it kind of all blended. Yes. Very and I just like doing that, which you can't do that with first and it would second be graders very as well. Right. You know, it's of course. Different. Rich, in the meantime, um, you have gone to, did you go to Wilkes College before you went to UVA? Yes. Uh, when I finished a master's degree at Michigan State, uh, my first full-time teaching job was at Wilkes College. Mm -hmm. and later it became Wilkes University. Mm -hmm. And I taught there three years and realized that if I were going to stay in higher education, I need to get a PhD. Yes. So uh, I think some of my, especially my high school math teachers and even my college math teachers would be amazed at the fact that I <laughs> continued on uh, to graduate school. I was a late bloomer. Uh -huh. uh, and I did finish a PhD, but then in 1971, we came back to uh, the Wilkes-Barre area and Charlotte well, she was a stay-at-home mom for a, while. Uh, for a number of years then, and I continued teaching at Wilkes. And I taught there a variety of mathematics and computer science courses, took a couple of leaves of absence, sabbatical and another leave of absence. Uh, in 1997, as my faculty is fond of saying, I went over to the dark side <laughs> and became an administrator. Uh -huh. uh, I moved to Ferrum College down outside of Roanoke, Virginia, as the second in command, uh, the vice president and dean of the college, the, the chief academic officer. And I kept that job for seven years. And then in... And what, uh, what size college are we talking about? Uh, Ferrum at the time was just about a thousand. Uh -huh. um, about 85 percent residential. Methodist affiliated. Methodist affiliated school. Uh, beautiful campus on uh, 650 acres mm. uh, in the Blue Ridge Mountains. Mm. Uh, in fact, we um, liked that area enough so that when I eventually retired, we moved back to Franklin County, Virginia. Yes. Uh, in 2004, I moved out to Iowa as the president of William Penn University, which is a Quaker-affiliated school. Mm -hmm. It had about 1,800 students. 
uh, and we were there for five years. Mm -hmm. And then we retired back to Franklin County. Well, isn't, I would think five years now is sort of around the average tenure at one institution, I think, for a college president. Um, uh, somewhere uh, along that. I mean, we certainly at Towson, we had Earl Hawkins, who I think was president for 20 years, and then a president or two later, we had Hope Smith, Hope Smith right. who was there for 20 years, but that is certainly now the exception rather than the norm. Right. Right. Well, we were older, and my mother was still living, uh -huh. and yet it was a very nice career opportunity Absolutely. for Richard. So we had more or less agreed before we went that we would go for five years, uh -huh. and depending on what happened to mother, but she felt we were really far away, uh -huh. and she was anxious for us to get back closer to home. Of course, at the time, we did not realize that she would live to be 98, 99, who knows, who knows how long. But we've had a lot of contact with her in the last three or four years since we have been back. Um, but I think Richard's education was really good. I mean, he, he was a visiting professor at Hamilton uh, College up in New York. He was also worked for the FBI a year. Yes. And that was a really neat experience because we moved to Washington <laughs> DC and lived in Washington a year. Well I, I would love for you to tell us a little bit about how that came to pass and a little bit about the experience as well actually from both of you the Washington experience and the FBI. Well the enrollment in our department at Wilkes, uh -huh. uh, well first of all when computer science really started coming into its own uh, in the early to mid 80s. Um, our department progressively uh, moved into computer science. Mm -hmm. um, and anyhow, the enrollment then really swung. Computer science became a hot of course, uh, major. Yeah. We couldn't hire faculty members uh, mm. to teach computer science. We had two people, one of whom had a PhD in math and almost a PhD in computer science mm. uh, from Caltech and we had another we, uh, fellow who did have a PhD in mathematics from University of Illinois, or, sorry, PhD in computer science, University of Illinois. So I started taking their classes uh -huh. to learn computer science mm -hmm. so that I could teach the beginning courses and free up those two fellows to teach the upper level right. courses. And several of my colleagues followed. And so we were able to staff this uh, rapidly growing computer science program. When I had essentially completed our computer science major, I wanted to take some, uh, get some more computer science training. And I decided pretty quickly that I didn't want to uh, go back to school mm -hmm. and be a graduate student all mm -hmm. over again. I wanted to get out and do some computer science. Yes. So uh, I applied to Westinghouse and to other companies that had uh, R&D facilities and that kind of thing. And it turned out that the man who had recruited some of our students uh, an FBI agent uh, convinced me to go to Washington DC and work for the Bureau. So uh -huh. I was a computer systems analyst and that was a good experience because they were using great, the largest IBM computers at the time, had two of them running in tandem with these monster databases. Uh, all the organized crime uh -huh. bad guys <laughs> on one database you know, and, and so forth. So we were doing um, mathematical analyses of these huh. databases. It was a very good experience. At the end of 14 months, I came back and uh, resumed teaching at Wilkes. Uh -huh. Well, I came back as department chair, uh -huh. um, and, but taught like three quarters time or half time and was uh -huh. department chair, uh, some administrative work. But it was a combination, and, and it was a good way to really get some practical computer science experience. So I taught a combination of math and computer science. But we had, you know, every employee at the FBI has top secret clearance, so oh. they go back 15 years into your past. So we had to do this security clearance thing. And then since we knew or we thought that we would be there just temporarily, we probably did more of the Washington touristy <laughs> things, you know, the um, Marine Corps drill team at Arlington Cemetery and the concerts. And the concerts on and the Capitol and, lawn and we got a subscription to 
um, the Kennedy Center for a Pops concert series and, and did a lot of that stuff. It was a good year. And so, and you have children at this point. Had, had children, had a child in second grade and a child in seventh grade. Uh -huh. And they worked out, that worked out very well. Uh, when we moved in the summer, we signed Stephen up at the oldest to be in an athletic soccer team. Uh -huh. And so by the time school started, he had many friends. Uh -huh. And when we went to parents' night, um, they said we wouldn't have even known he was a new student, uh -huh. that he had gone in, you know, so well. Right. Um, because of his so top clearance, I was also had some clearance. So uh -huh. I worked at the White House. You did? In the old executive office building, uh -huh. um, in their greeter's office, and in their um, uh, cards, doing sending out birthday cards and anniversary cards and you know, occasionally if there was a press Christmas conference card. and they needed someone, they'd come in the room and say, we need three people for this press conference. So I did that um, one day a week, took the metro in and volunteered my time for the day and came back out. <laughs> so it was fun. I mean, we got to eat in the dining hall with uh -huh. congressmen and it was, it was a nice experience. And wave flags for visiting We did. At, at the end of Christmas, they had a party for us, Very which nice. I don't think they do anymore. Yeah. But they opened up the White House, and we had the run of the whole first floor of the oh. White House. The ropes were down, and we got to see all the trees and be right there, sit on the furniture. Um, so it was, it was a and very was, nice experience. And who was president when you were Reagan, in? Ronald Reagan, Ronald Reagan, Reagan right. Nancy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Nancy came she in to greet them. She spoke to our group. Uh -huh. Thank the volunteers. Which wonderful. Is nice. So that was a wonderful adventure. Good, good experience. So you come back to Wilkes came back Barry. to Wilkes. Came back to Wilkes, um, and as I said, I came back as the department chair. The longtime department chair had uh, stepped down as chair. Was uh -huh. still there on the faculty, and I was chair for a while, and faculty member. In 1993-94, uh, I was fortunate enough to be selected as an ACE fellow, American Council on Education fellow. Mm -hmm. One of the members of our fellows class, a woman named Louise Phelps, did her fellowship at Towson <laughs> uh, under Hoke Smith. Uh -huh. I did my fellowship at Syracuse University. And then I went back to Wilkes for three years, but that really kind of kick-started my administrative career. Uh -huh. um, the, the purpose of that program is to grow presidents and vice presidents and deans. Uh -huh. And I came back to Wilkes and stayed three years and that's when I went to Ferrum as the dean. Uh -huh. So it, it did its job in getting you ready for that, that career sort of. <coughs> I enjoyed the administrative segue. work. Had I had my career to do over again, mm -hmm. I may have not spent as many years in the classroom, mm -hmm. taken a lesson from the military uh, namely, in, in their officers' training programs, it's 18 months, two years, maybe, maybe 36 months in a particular job, and then you move to another job. Mm -hmm. uh, I stayed a long time in the classroom, which I enjoyed, mm -hmm. thoroughly enjoyed. Mm -hmm. But if I really had a, an eye on an administrative career, I would have moved mm -hmm. earlier. Mm -hmm. But we had a very uh, good life situation. Uh, Charlotte was at this prep school, Wyoming mm -hmm. Seminary. I was at Wilkes. Uh, we had commuted three miles in each direction, uh, and it was a great town in which to raise our two boys. Mm -hmm. And the two boys got a prep school education yes. uh, as a fringe benefit. So we didn't, we weren't, we didn't have any push from behind uh, to change that situation. Yes, it was very <coughs> comfortable. And so you become a president in two different settings. Right. I was president at William Penn University uh, for five years and enjoyed that thoroughly. Uh, enjoyed living in small town Iowa. Uh -huh. um, Iowa loves its day in the sun during the caucuses at presidential <laughs> campaign and we lived through uh, the 2004 uh, and the 2008 campaign. Interesting. Uh, I retired and we moved back to Smith Mountain Lake, close to Roanoke, in 2009. And then we got busy, we put a big addition on our house and so forth, uh -huh. did some traveling. 
In the fall of 2011, I was asked to serve in a, as an interim administrator. Uh, I was the interim dean for arts and sciences at Mountain State University uh -huh. in Beckley, West Virginia, which is three hours drive uh -huh. from our lake house. Uh, I started in September, and in January, the Board of Trustees fired the longtime president. Mm. And sometime after that, they asked me to serve as interim president. And I did that until um, the end of 2012, the end of December 2012. Uh, that ended, and I re-retired. Uh -huh. So, so now we have time to do things like oral history interviews <laughs> at Towson University. And we're delighted that you do have the time. You were going to say something. Just that it was an enjoyable time, both in Iowa and at Beckley, for me. Uh -huh. right. uh, first became, lady. Yeah, I became the first lady. <laughs> we did, uh, especially in Iowa, the previous president had not done very much entertaining. I see. And had not done a lot in faculty, not faculty development, alumni development. Uh huh. And so we really saw that as a need and an interest for us uh, to do. And so we had a lot of people from the community um, at Christmas time and had a lot of students. We entertained students, we entertained faculty, we entertained community people. Uh, I was on two boards in the, in mm -hmm. the community, um, which I enjoyed, and, and that gave me a chance to grow as an individual as well. Absolutely. So there's just been a lot of, we've had an interesting life, we've been in many different places, we've done a lot of different things. Um, when I was at Ferrum, when he was the dean, I worked part time uh, as an academic counselor. Oh. And so that was a, a new experience for me. Um, what did you do in that role? In that role we met, of course, that was 10 years ago. Um, we met with students who were on warning and probation. I see. And we did that both as in, on an individual basis, but we also did um, seminars for them on study skills and um, time management. Time management. Test taking. Test skills. taking. Um, you know, all kinds of right. those kinds of. Mm -hmm. academic things to help get them prepared and then I met with them on a weekly basis for just a half hour 20 minutes uh, kind of checking up on them you know mm -hmm. how are things going uh, sometimes we take a book and we would sit down and I would say how are you going to attack this chapter mm -hmm. um, one of the areas that I felt weak as a student coming out of high school I was very diligent about studying, but I had never really made the proper use of my big titles, my uh -huh, big headings. Uh -huh. And I knew all the details, but I hadn't really gotten the big overview picture. And uh -huh. so when I was working with my students at FAIRM, I wanted to make sure that they understood that those big titles were as important as the little the details. details. So, you know, little things like that that... I was the did. academic dean. Yes. And the faculty all reported to me, the library, the computer center, the registrar, and so uh -huh. forth. And the ARC, the Academic Resources Center, which was our primary, essentially our only, academic support entity. Uh -huh. So <clears throat> the combination of, of carrots and sticks, carrots, these seminars in uh, test-taking skills and, and uh, academic skill development, but then uh, if you were in warning or probation, <coughs> excuse me, you had to go see an academic counselor. Uh -huh. And so one of the things that's missing among undergraduates is discipline. Yes. A lot of them are, you know, bright enough and so forth, but they, they don't realize that if they have a psychology test at 8 o'clock on Friday, they don't party on 30, Thursday night. Uh -huh. uh, and so the uh, academic counselors, and Charlotte was uh, one of those, provided the external discipline and focus and helped them see, you know, just develop the kind of skills that they needed. And because of his position, I didn't report to him. I reported directly to the president. <laughs> so, so. Well, it was the president's, when we started, when we started these academic counselors, 
uh, he knew that she would be good, and he said, uh, Charlotte would be very good, and I said, no, I can't hire her, because she, you know, yes. we had both, right, right. both common sense and policy prevented her reporting, and he said, well, I'll hire her. And she reported directly to me, so I didn't even see her contract. I, didn't even, I don't know how much money she made. Probably not as much as she deserved <laughs> but for uh, her time and, and effort. And the, uh, <coughs> in administrative roles, <coughs> to some extent in that academic um, counselor role, but more in the fact that we did a lot of the campus entertaining. Yes. Uh, the president didn't particularly like to do ah, that, uh, okay. and his wife was working full time. She was a teacher, and so we did a lot of the campus entertaining. Certainly, when we got to William Penn and then to Mountain State, um, as first lady, she just played an integral role. Uh, we were very much a team, uh -huh. and um, at William Penn, for instance, well, Mountain State also. I was Doctor Sowers or President Sowers. Mm -hmm. She was Charlotte. Mm -hmm. Which was fine. You know, yeah. I mean, uh, she did a lot of work with campus beautification, and so all in the Iowa. grounds crew. Not, not in, in Iowa. In Iowa, not yeah. In State. Um, but uh, you know, all the grounds crew knew her. And she was Charlotte, <laughs> and she would bake chocolate chip cookies for them. But they would work really it's a hard. Powerful with her, pers for her. persuader, <laughs> chocolate chip cookies. Right. right. But. But we've treated the. Uh, administrative work very much as a team project. Uh -huh. It makes itself apparent as you talk about it. My, my assessment, and Charlotte can comment on this from her perspective, which is different. Since I had no history of college and envir environment in my uh -huh. family, and it's curious, um, my sister went to Salisbury, so uh -huh. she's a college graduate as uh -huh. well. Uh, and then both of our sons have gotten PhDs, one in biochemistry, one in, uh, in theology from Duke. Um, but Towson gave me a start. Um, the atmosphere was supportive, but not intense. Had I gone to, well, first of all, had I gone to the University of Maryland uh, and been 370922, uh, you know, I would, I, well, may have flunked out. You know, mm -hmm. I just I needed more support than that. Uh, Towson, the year I graduated was 1,960 students, still under 2,000 students. Mm -hmm. Under Jim Fisher, it really grew rapidly thereafter. But, um, but also academically, it was for me the appropriate level of rigor and expectations. Mm -hmm. uh, had I gone to a Swarthmore, say, or University of Pennsylvania, I may not have risen to the occasion and been, been able to develop the kind of study skills that allowed me to succeed. Mm -hmm. I may have uh, become a fatality. So I really credit Towson being the right level and the right start for me. Mm -hmm. You know, my mother was a college graduate. My father was a college graduate. He had been a teacher, a principal, right. a supervisor. There was just never any question that I wouldn't go to college. You know, I just yes. knew from the time junior high that that was an expectation. Mm -hmm. And I was very fortunate when I came to Towson. Uh, I did not have to work. Uh, my father paid the bills. And he said, Towson and your work here is your job. Mm -hmm. You know, I expect you to get good grades. Um, I don't want you working. You spend the time on your studies, mm -hmm. and you do a good job. And that, that just was the expectation. And I did fine. I mean, I was not the brightest by far in the class, but I had over a three-point, and I was in SGA choir and in FAC. Were you in Kappa Delta Pi? Kappa Delta Pi. Indeed. And, and so, you know, I, I felt like I met his expectations. Uh-huh. Um, and had a good education that prepared me well for what was to come. I worked very briefly uh, in the Dean of Students office for oh. you know work study, but f for the most part I didn't work. However, I had to earn my next year's tuition and fees during the summer. During the summer. And I was fortunate I usually got construction jobs uh -huh. and was able to earn enough money, but my parents just didn't have it, so right. I had to earn what I needed. So neither of you was on tuition waiver 
from the state, <laughs> or were Both you indigenous? Both of us were on. Mm, so we <laughs> waiver mm. from the state. However, when we he went to Michigan State, mm -hmm. and when I graduated, we got married, and we went to Michigan State. Mm -hmm. And if I'm remembering correctly, when he finished, um, well, before he really knew he was going to Michigan State, he had a job offer from Baltimore County, which he turned down when he got into Michigan yes. State and decided to go to Michigan. At the end of his master's degree, he applied to Baltimore County and was offered a worse teaching position <laughs> than when he was offered when he sure, when was just graduated. graduating. And by then he knew that he did not want to be in high school. Right. So he had an offer from Wilkes University mm -hmm. and we took the offer mm -hmm. from Wilkes University. And of course I went along with it. <clears throat> I wrote to Towson uh -huh. and explain the circumstances uh -huh. and essentially uh, inquired about what I would need to do to repay uh -huh. uh, the state at the time. Um, I think our fees were $700, $750 a year, uh -huh. tuition, room, and board. Um, and, but we were expected to repay that if yes. we didn't fulfill the teaching pledge. Um, I still have it. I didn't bring it, but I, I got a letter back from Towson that was a little bit um, off-putting, I guess. Not everyone is permitted to pay back their, their uh, tuition. Obligation. You know. uh, Interesting. It, 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 yeah, it didn't, uh, I'll have to share that with you. Uh, it didn't, they were not receptive to my offer to uh, to repay. Hmm. At the time, Charlotte's mom and dad lived in uh, Howard County, mm -hmm. and we had other relatives here. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking that, well, uh, we'll be in Pennsylvania for a while. We may end up moving to um, back to Maryland mm -hmm. and, and fulfill our pledge, or uh, perhaps a reciprocity if she taught public schools mm -hmm. uh, would fulfill the pledge. Uh, that turned out to not happen. Mm -hmm. We both spent our careers in education and yes. Towson prepared us for that, mm -hmm. but uh, we didn't technically fulfill that you know, teaching we, we weren't allowed <laughs> to pay back um, our teaching pledge. Um, they wanted us to come back here to the state and teach. Yes. And we didn't. Um, I taught a little public school in Pennsylvania, uh -huh. and I taught uh, two and a half years in Virginia, uh -huh. um, and then I went into the private school. And, well, and a year in Michigan, too. And a year in Michigan. Uh -huh. So I have, I feel like I have done a lot for education. Absolutely. Um, but it was just interesting about uh -huh. how that had played out. Uh -huh. Now, my roommate um, graduated and moved to Towson, and she applied, and they, she was fine. She, because she was marrying and marrying someone that did not graduate from Towson, uh -huh. was not a student at Towson, um, she went off to uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. And I think, I think that may have paid back something uh -huh. toward her teaching, uh, it education. Certainly, it certainly sounds to me that you have paid back to education certainly a great deal more than the tuition that was waived. One last question, and that is, what advice would you give to an individual who was considering a career in education in teaching? Um, fourth grade, or first grade, or post-secondary? I don't know. That's a very hard question. It is a hard question. Teaching has changed a lot. And there is just now so much emphasis on paperwork. There is so much emphasis on testing. Um, I didn't have that. Mm -hmm. You know, I pretty much had autonomy in the classroom within reason. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were given the books that we were to use, 
and we could be as creative with those books as we wanted to be. And if, if I got everything done but the last chapter in a book, it was not horrible. Uh, we didn't have the SOLs. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I would have to think long and hard about going into teaching mm -hmm. today under the way it is set up. I have a similar uh, feeling about advising young people. I had a wonderful career in education and if somebody wanted to follow my career, I would encourage them enthusiastically. I am not a proponent of faculty unions at the public school level or at the collegiate level. And so, fortunately, I've never had to work under, I was a, I was a laborer when I was doing construction work in the summers. Mm -hmm. A little bit of union experience, <laughs> but I, no faculty union experience. A uh, combination of <clears throat> the fact that I believe that if, for most people who are in a union, their first loyalty is not to their students, it's to their bargaining unit, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is unfortunate. <clears throat> that plus the bureaucratic attempts at instilling accountability. Mm -hmm. Charlotte mentioned the SOLs and No Child Left Behind and all. Uh, the profession has changed. So I would certainly encourage someone who is interested in collegiate teaching uh, to get a graduate degree uh, which is a prerequisite, and then um, to pursue a teaching career at the collegiate level. And, I, and <clears throat> Charlotte taught in this prep school. Our boys attended there. They got first-rate education. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of respect for the teachers at that school. So mm -hmm. I just would be, my advice would be that if they wanted to pursue a career in public elementary or secondary education to go into it with their eyes wide open and do a lot of research and do a lot of um, background, you know, a lot of preparation before they committed to that. Now, as you know, careers fluctuate now. So you teach for five years, then you, um, you do something else. So it's not like you were making a lifetime. But if you're going to prepare yourself through a collegiate, you know, uh, to go through a teacher, education program and do it with your eyes open. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I don't mean to sound too harsh. I love teaching. And I worked really hard at teaching. Mm -hmm. And it is a huge commitment. It is. And it is also very, very rewarding if you have the right kind of support. If, if your principal is on board and, you know, you're in a good situation which allows you to work and be creative and team teach and set really good goals, I'm all for it. I would say go for it, but um, sometimes that's just not true today. And you don't have the support and you have too many students in, a, in the classroom. Um, you don't have often the art, music, and phys ed, and, and I think that's a critical part of education. And in some schools, they're doing away with that. You know, there's not the band, not the music, not the arts, um, and I think all of that is very important. There's also an obvious financial consideration because a bright young person uh, has opportunities in which they can earn a great deal more money than they can in teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, here comes your mom. So, um, you know, we have a friend who's my age who grew up under similar circumstances and who, and who, and who uh, went to law school and became a corporate attorney uh -huh. <coughs> for the <coughs> Excuse me for, <coughs> I'm sorry, for AT&T AT and then for Duke Energy and ended up making a lot, of a money. lot more money than we've made. Right. Um, we're, we're not poor, but right. 
uh, we've lived frugally and, and we've had to. Uh-huh. So. And raised two sons, so. Right. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, I mean, I agree with Charlotte. We've had uh, very rewarding careers and a wonderful life. And so I wouldn't um, say, no, 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 that's, that's not. Well, as a matter of fact, <coughs> her older son and daughter-in-law are about to move into academic careers. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're encouraged by that. You know, mm -hmm. There certainly some advice I'd give them about teaching in a small private college. Um, but we will not in any way discourage them from that. And as I said, Towson was a good, um, it provided a good launching pad mm -hmm. for our careers. Yeah, I felt for the most part very well prepared mm -hmm. in my educational courses. And, you know, a lot of people poo-poo education courses. <laughs> and, uh, but if they're done right, they can make a huge difference when you're in the classroom mm -hmm. and confronted with that for the first time. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that we forgot? Is there something I, you would like to add that I haven't asked you about? Well, <clears throat> just that I hope that uh, you erase the part about <laughs> 50 at reunion and that Martin Computer enhances uh, both of us to make us look 20 years younger. Indeed. No problem. That's part of our job. Thank you so much for sharing with us uh, a life's history. It's been fun. You're welcome. Thank you.